So with it looking more and more like Joe Biden will take the White House, progressives are trying to angle to push back on a potential corporate direction of that administration. So this is AOC and 12 other progressive House Democrats have all signed on to a letter calling on the Senate not to confirm any lobbyists or executives to future administration posts. And Sagar, a whole range of progressive groups, Our Revolution and others, have signed on to this letter as well, clearly trying to position themselves to say, look, yes, we got behind you during the election, but this is part of the effort to be able to push Joe Biden to the left once he gets into office, which is something that I think both of us have been a little bit skeptical that they will actually have success. Well, look no further, honestly, than the letter itself, right? So, like, this is not addressed to the Joe Biden campaign. It's addressed to To Mitch McConnell Mm -hmm. and Chuck Schumer. So you're like, okay, well, that's a little weird. So the candidate that you support and are backing people to, you're not actually calling on them to answer to what you want. You're asking for the Senate to check that person. Okay, already a bit strange. But you go and you look through at what this is, I mean, I think it's just for headlines. I just, there's no realistic chance that this is going to happen. The best analysis I saw is that this is AOC maybe angling to run against Chuck Schumer in a primary because Mm -hmm. by pointing this and putting the standard to Chuck Schumer and to others being like, listen, you did not vote for Rex Tillerson. You didn't vote for some of the people that Trump put into office or put into a cabinet position. So if you then go vote for them under Biden, it could be used as fodder against you. But realistically, there are no votes in the Senate, except for Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, who would actually even do something like this. I doubt Elizabeth Warren would even vote against it, but we'll see. Um, And so it just seems like a bit of a ploy. I mean, there's no real power here that they have to enforce any of this. There's no reason in the Senate or the Biden campaign really should listen at this point. Well, we saw early on when Joe sort of clinched the Democratic yeah. nomination, there was like a list of progressive yes. demands that was issued and it got a lot of attention. The Biden campaign was basically like, like yeah, no. that's nice. No. <laughs> um, and so I see it. Look, I'm going to give it a little bit of mm. more more of a charitable read. That's not just about AOC posturing to potentially primary check Schumer, although that's something I would certainly be down with. <laughs> I think it's an attempt to lay a marker down because in the in the Obama administration, there was so little internal dissent, Mm -hmm. so little. The little bits that there were. I mean, Elizabeth Warren has still never been forgiven for any minor bits of protest that she put up during the Obama administration over some of their um, Wall Street people that they wanted to get confirmed. So there was so little of that dissent in the Obama era. The fact that from the beginning, you have a little bit of a marker laid down here, I think does pretend that it is going to be a fun fundamentally different dynamic during the Biden administration. Now, look, do I think that Joe Biden and his team, um, we've already looked at some of the potential cabinet members that have been floated out there, highly conventional, many of them industry aligned, certainly defense industry aligned. Many of them could have been in a Clinton or an Obama White House rolling out the same type of people. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that he is actually going to change the way that he structures his administration or the type of appointees that he puts out there. However, I think that what you will see is a much more fraught internal dynamic and a lot more of public criticism of this administration from within the Democratic Party than you ever saw during the Obama era. That sets up a different dynamic for 2024. It sets up a different dynamic in general moving forward as this fight for the direction of the Democratic Party continues to it's unfold. It's possible. I kind of see it as more of like, it's almost the way that never Trumpers have handled themselves with the Trump administration, where they're all mm-hmm. going to go along with the single biggest priorities. They all voted for Trump, like all of that. People like Sass and John Cornyn, who I covered in my radar, but they'll rhetorically lay down their markers. I mean, yeah. let, look, let's see. I don't think they're actually going to do anything. I mean, and even if they wanted to, She's got four votes, maybe six votes in the House. How many votes you got in the Senate? Like two, maybe. So, you know, like why listen if there's no power behind it? That's just the way I'm looking at it is, okay, issue your thing. That's great. Gets headlines. Maybe it'll go for a primary. But in terms of meaningfully, can you block this? Yeah. No. Right. So if you can't, then they, why should they listen? So the difference, yeah. there's a difference between internal, like, this is like what Pelosi said, yeah. right, about yeah. about the squad and about yeah. AOC. Right. She's like, oh, you got two votes. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. On the other hand, we've seen the way that 
people like AOC in the squad and others, Bernie Sanders, others who have like an outsize following and command of social media and grassroots energy are able to shape the conversation and put pressure on that way, totally. which totally. is a very different like power center and part of what has been starting to develop within the Democratic Party. So look, you're right. We'll they see. They're willing to use it. But right? this is. Yes. But I do think yeah. the fact that they're putting this out now mm -hmm. before the election even happens is a bit of an attempt to lay a marker down and say, look, we're not just going to roll over and go along with this. We're going to make you have to answer for any sort of, you know, anti-progressive or anti-populist moves that you make yeah. here. Well, let's see. All right, we're going to have more rising for you after this.